Hi, my name is Joanne, and I am so excited for you to be here with me today on this call, if you will. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll just give a little introduction about myself, and then I'm going to walk through our program uh, as if I was on a call with somebody. Um, so I'll give hopefully enough examples um, to answer all the questions you might have. And then if you do have questions after you watch this, you're more than welcome to reach out to us by phone or um, text or email or anything like that. So, okay, I'm going to dive in. So again, my name is Joanne and I have worked at Animal Adventures in Music for about a year now. Um, and before that, I was in the corporate world working for a software company um, doing product development. So um, taking new ideas and, um, you know, moving them all the way through the process of ideation to um, rolling out new products to market. So that was really fun. I really liked that. Um, and it worked perfectly with coming over to the Animal Adventures and Music team because, um, like I said, we're, we're a really new company. We've only been around for a year and a half. And um, when I joined, it was still in the curriculum writing phase of everything. So um, since I've been here and, you know, even to this moment, I kind of do everything along with my coworker. Um, we share most of the responsibilities together. It's a very small business feel. Um, so that's a ton of fun. Uh, I really enjoy working here. Um, <laughs> And so that's just a little bit about me. So uh, you don't feel like you're listening to a stranger talk for 30 minutes. Um, so normally at this point in the conversation, I would ask you some questions about yourself so you can get to know each other a little bit. Um, but for the sake of this, this uh, video, um, we'll just say that I'm talking to a, a small piano teacher um, who has been in business for a little while and uh, maybe is looking for a way to reach out to um, a younger demographic of students. And um, yeah, that's what we'll go with. Okay, and so with that, I'm gonna get into the good stuff. So what is Animal Adventures in Music? Um, and from a business standpoint, we are a business to business company. So we don't employ teachers or schools uh, and we don't have physical locations um, and we don't market directly to parents. So we sell the rights to teach our program and we sell our materials to existing um, schools and teachers. So, um, and the other thing that we do that we spend a lot of our time doing is supporting our existing um, schools and teachers who are part of our program. So some of the things that you get as a part of your membership are free shipping anywhere in the US. Um, and we put all of our schools, we link to them on our website, um, and there is a fair amount of traffic that trickles through there, so that's kind of nice. And then these next three bullets are all about uh, marketing and advertising. So um, we have a lot of pre-made content that we've spent a lot of time putting together and that we kind of continue to keep updated. Um, and so it's a lot of uh, pictures, um, photos, uh, and just content that you are free to use as a school and teacher for anything that you might need. So um, everything that you see on our website, everything that you see in this presentation is available to our schools for to post on their own social media accounts, to throw an email blast, to print out, put on flyers. Um, so that's kind of a perk of, of being a school with us. And then training information. So we've put together a training video and training um, PDFs for teachers and there's really not a lot to um, being trained but when um, there is you know kind of a hitch with schools and teachers getting started with that then then we um, jump in and help out as much as we can with that so a little bit about the program um, it is for preschoolers so two to six years old and two-year-olds can be tricky and you know some six-year-olds are really mature too so that's kind of just a general range um, and it kind of depends on the student um, in most cases. So that's the same thing with how long it takes to complete. Depending on the student, it could be anywhere from one to two years. Um, but we don't really um, enforce any sort of timelines or anything like that. It's really however long the student takes to move through it. That's great. So the program can be taught in a one-on-one -on -one setting, in a group, in person, or virtually. Um, so one-on-one -on -one is really our favorite kind of ideal scenario for teaching this program. And the reason for that is because this program is really uh, music theory forward. So there uh, can be some logistical issues with group classes 
where you have one student like flying through the program and another student who might be hanging back on a concept for a little while, struggling to grasp it. Um, and then you find yourself in a situation where you have two kids in the same class who are in completely different places. Um, and it's, it's not gonna be as an effective of an education. And so group classes can be done. Um, and the scenario where it kind of works best is if you have like siblings or um, really close friends or neighbors or basically any situation where you, you can ensure that the kids who started in the class will move through the whole program at the same uh, pace with each other. Because in that case, you, you probably won't run into those issues. So that's how group kind of works. Um, and then in-person and versus virtually. So in-person is is great, really great, because then students can um, hold the instruments and see them and, and um, touch them and everything. And so virtually it can be done. You are gonna be missing that aspect of it, but we do have activities in our teacher guide that are alternative virtually focused um, activities that you would use with your virtual students as opposed to doing like using our music staff run because there's a lot of activities that use that. So we built the teacher guide in a way that it definitely does cover uh, virtual scenarios um, 100%. So it definitely can be done. And we have a couple of teachers who solely teach virtually. They don't even have an in-person lesson with Animal Adventures and, and it's going really well. So uh, that's kind of how a bit of the structure. So then the way that the um, curriculum is laid out is it's 10 levels and each level has its own instrument and its own animal character. And then there's a ton of music theory concepts that are covered throughout the program. So uh, as you move through, you move from level to level and instrument to instrument. So this, what you see on the screen here is level six, and this is the saxophone level. And in every book, there's a diagram that points out the different parts of the instrument that the students will be learning. So. Um, questions we get a lot are, can I teach this program if I'm a piano teacher and I don't have any woodwinds experience? Um, and the answer is yes, for sure. Um, the instruments in our program are, we focus on them from an exposure standpoint as opposed to an instruction standpoint. So um, you'll be doing things like holding up the saxophone for the student and showing them when you push down on the keys and you uh, blow into the mouthpiece. That's how you make sound with the saxophone and you guys will be listening to music from our pre-existing playlists that highlight the saxophone in music. So you'll be listening to um, genres that are, you know, often played with the saxophone, like jazz music. And we also throw in um, some other stuff in there too, just to give them a really wide exposure to the instrument. Like beatboxing with a saxophone, um, modern pop covers, that kind of stuff. So the answer is, yeah, you can definitely, any music teacher can teach this program. You don't have to have experience in any of the 10 instruments really to be able to teach it as long as you know you have a music background. You can teach this program. So that's kind of the structure there. So as far as the lessons go, um, every lesson is broken up into three segments whether it's a 30 minute lesson or a 45 minute lesson or a 60 minute lesson, we break it up into those three segments. And the first one that um, happens is called table time. And table time is where you and the student um, sit down at a table and the student brings in their book for um, the level that they're in. And then let's see, you guys are in um, chapter seven. So the student starts you guys start the lesson by opening up the book and going to the table time page in the book. So then you two would work through this page. And so what are they learning here? They're learning about intervals and specifically they're learning about the interval of a seventh uh, on this page in this chapter. So you guys would, as the teacher, you would instruct the student on what that is, you know, how to reproduce it, everything about that. And as you guys work through this page and maybe some other activities um, during table time using a whiteboard, that kind of thing. After that, um, you would move into rug time. And during rug time is where you basically reinforce with the student everything that you had just taught them in table time. So uh, for in this case, you know, you would um, move to the middle of the room with the, our music staff rug that we have, and you would maybe say, okay, um, take this 
rug marker, which we have um, the rug markers that have every note name on them. And you would maybe have the student do different activities where they recreate an interval of a seventh on the music staff rug. Um, and our teacher guide has activities for, for all three segments of every um, lesson. So if I go to level six in our teacher guide, so the teacher guide covers all 10 levels of the program in one book. Um, so if I go to level six and I go to chapter seven, interval of the seven, so this is, there it is right there, chapter seven. And you've got a table time activity and rug time activities and stage time activities. Um, all right here. So you could just open this up and go to the rug time section and read through it. And it talks about um, doing a rhythm review, doing a tempo marking review, and of course, working on the interval of the seventh uh, during rug time. So those two segments of the lesson, rug time and, and table time, are kind of like a package deal. They work together to um, really enforce the uh, concepts that the student is learning. And then you've got stage time. So that's the last um, 10 minutes or 15 minutes of the lesson. And this is where you focus on the instrument of that level. So level six is the saxophone level. So um, maybe in chapter seven, you touch on the um, on genres. So maybe you're really listening to a lot of music in that level and you would probably pick up the saxophone every lesson of um, level six and you would have the student identify, okay, we talked about the keys last week. What do the keys do? Working through that with the student again. Um, and then, yeah, jumping into music and listening to music um, and playing some games having to do with that. So um, stage time is really like the fun kind of reprieve moment. It's, it's a little different than the first two segments of the class and it focuses on the exposure to the instrument. So that is the layout of the lessons. And then I will show you a little bit about the structure of our books. So we lay out all 10 books in the same structure. And it's similar to what we do with the lessons. We do a lot of pattern building in this program to just, um, you know, set expectations for, for these students. They're so young, so we want them to be able to, you know, know what they're getting into with every lesson and, and get familiar with the program so that as they move through it, it's, you know, no surprises, that kind of thing. So each book, well, as you can see here, um, it starts with an animal introduction, so they get to meet their um, animal character at the beginning of each book, which is fun and cute. Um, and then table of contents that walks you through the subjects and the goals for that level and then a review page. So this is kind of called the cheat sheet page. Um, on this red screenshot here, you see, so this is where we lay out everything that they learned about in the previous levels already. And then we refer back to this page all the time um, in their homework. In the teacher guide, we refer to it to just say, okay, you know, I'm learning a new tempo marking or I'm answering some questions about tempo, tempo markings. Oh, you can't, you know, remember you're a little confused, go back to the review page and check it out. So that's always there. And then we do have um, posters that you can buy to set up in your classroom that match the review page. So that's a little bit more um, of that pattern building and familiarity that I was talking about. And then you have the instrument overview, which you saw um, a little while back with the saxophone. So that's in every uh, level, every book, we have the two page spread that lays out the instrument for them to see all the parts to the instrument. So then we get into the meat of the book, which is chapters one through 10. And every book has 10 chapters. And the way that it kind of works itself out is that you usually go through one chapter per lesson with a student, kind of on average. So then each chapter has uh, a table time page or pages, like I had mentioned. And then every chapter also has an adventure guide which is the homework that students do uh, at home in between their lessons. Um, so we'll go to, I flip open to chapter seven here. So you guys would have worked on that table time page and then the work that they take home is the very next page and it says chapter seven adventure guide. And this every adventure guide has kind of a, a big blurb of text on the page to start out the adventure guide. And this is for the benefit of the parents. Uh, and this is kind of just breaking down what was covered in the previous chapter um, in layman's terms. So if parents don't have any uh, musical experience, then they can pick up where you guys left off and help their student through their homework. Um, and this is nice because then 
Uh, parents don't have to worry about, you know, if they have to miss a lesson and they don't sit in on the lesson or if they space out during a moment of the lesson or what have you. Um, this is always there for them to refer back to. Uh, so then there's homework questions that the students complete uh, that have to do with the chapter and some, you know, it's pretty cute stuff. Put the gem stickers on the uh, treasure chests to illustrate how many uh, notes are in an interval of a seven kind of thing. So um, they complete this homework at home and that's kind of in every chapter. And then after they get through chapters one through 10, we have the test prep and the test. So uh, there's a test at the end of every book and um, it's really kind of a simple and easy and fun test. It's meant to be more of like a celebratory bookend to the level as opposed to uh, like a rigorous uh, academic testing of their knowledge. Um, and the reason we do that is because we pack so much information into this program and there's so much review built into the program that it's really not necessary to kind of test them at the end as, as another way to reinforce this stuff. Um, so it's just this fun thing. There's lots of stickers in the test um, and what usually happens is after chapter 10, the student would come back to a lesson and an entire lesson would be dedicated to review. So you would work through with your student, whatever they might be struggling with or stuck on, you can kind of go over those points. Um, or, or maybe your student is, is doing really well and they're connecting with the concepts. Uh, and you can just spend the lesson doing fun stuff that they really like, like their favorite rug time activities, um, whiteboard activities or, or whatever uh, they like the most. So that's cool. And then they get sent home and they do their test from home. It's like an adventure guide. It's like their homework that they do. So they complete their test and then they uh, bring it back into you um, for their next lesson. You, you know, you can look through it, gold star, all that stuff. And then, so to finish up their book, they, after that, they have a congratulations page where it just says, you know, good job, you finished the book and they get an introduction to their character in the book. So here's uh, Wendy congratulating them, Wendy the whale. And the next character is Baxter the bat for level seven, the cello level. So they get to meet their next character at the end of the book. And then they have their um, stickers at the end of every book as well. And I think the only thing that I actually skipped through after the stickers, here's all the stickers that they have at the back of every book, um, is the flashcard passport. So in the adventure guide and just throughout the program in all of the levels, we have um, prompts for the student to go to the back of their book and punch out one of their flashcards. So at the back of every book, we have this thick card stock that has these perforated edges. And on the one side, it has the note names. And sometimes it just has cute kind of joke questions. And then on the back, it has the position of the note on the grand staff. So these flashcards that they use throughout the program. So this is done in, in their homework. So it'll say, go to the back of your book, punch out a flashcard and add it to your deck. And then they play some flashcard games to um, help them learn the, to be able to identify the notes. And then after they complete those games, they get to go back to their flashcard passport, which is at the back of the book. And this has spots for them to place um, push pin stickers that they put in each ribbon. And at the end, they get to put this giant gold star right here. And this kind of shows their journey through working on their flashcards in every book. So, uh, but that is how every single book is laid out in the same way. So once they work through that in the first book and the second book after that, there's these um, patterns set in place. So they really kind of just get used to it from the beginning and it's a nice structure for them to work through. Um, so then the teacher guide, we are kind of already looked at this, but I'll So um, there's a lesson plan for every chapter of every book. And each lesson plan, like I said, has a, uh, activities for table time and rug time and stage time. So the way we put this together um, is kind of so that you do have a lesson plan written out for every single lesson of every single level. So there is really not much prep required when you run this program. Um, and it's nice too for like maybe fresh um, teachers, maybe right out of school without any teaching experience yet, they could just pick up this teacher guide um, and run through this program and teach it very effectively, um, having had no teaching experience really. So that's kind of how much information we packed into here. Um, but the other 
aspect of this is that we rely on uh, you guys, on our educators, um, to be the experts that you are. And if you happen to be a teacher who um, you have your own methods that uh, are tried and true and that you love, that you find to be super effective with your students, um, th then by all means, absolutely teach the program that way. We don't enforce any very active usage of the teacher guide as much or as little as you want to use it is up to you. If you if you follow it along for every single lesson and do everything that way, then that's great. Um, and if you never open it once and teach the whole program without it, that's also fine. Whatever works for you um, is what we want you to do. Uh, so after every level, after they complete a level, they get a medal and the medal is really fun. So big deal, spinning metal, very exciting. It has the animal's face on one side and the number of the level on the other side. And so they get their metal, um, little congratulations moment, and then they just move right on to their next book. And you just pick up where you left off and just kind of keep moving through the program. Um, so let's talk lesson rooms. So what you see here is uh, two example lesson rooms from some of our schools. And the one on the left with the blue wall is about eight by 10 feet. Um, so that's pretty small and it can fit at everything. Uh, what you don't see in this picture is the child size drum set, um, full size pianos back there. It's an example for you. Um, and it walks, so this walks through everything that you need in your room to run this program. So you definitely need uh, a whiteboard and writing utensils and a table and chairs for you to work through table time. And then you'll need our music staff rug and rug markers for rug time. And then for stage time, you will want one of all 10 instruments to use and to, to um, show with your student. So we don't sell those, but we have put together an Amazon list that just has a collection of instruments that seem to be kind of middle of the road in terms of cost and quality. Um, and sometimes that's a little cost prohibitive for some of our teachers in schools. So what they will do is like go on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or um, reach out to their community of teachers and see if there's you know anything out there that they could buy that's used. Um, the instruments don't need to be like of the highest quality. Like I said, the students won't be playing them. So, I mean, they might, you know, drag the bow of the violin over the strings like once per student kind of deal. So it, there's not going to be a lot of action happening with these instruments. So if you can find, um, you know, cheaper used instruments, as long as they are functional, uh, you'll be good to go. So then some extra stuff that's nice to add into your studio would be um, our 15, so we have 15 different posters. We've got the 10 little animal posters, which are really cute. And then we have five um, informational educational posters that mimic those review pages in the book that I was mentioning. So those are really nice to decorate your room with. And then also throwing up one of each metal in the room is really cute and exciting for the kids, motivating. So you can see in the picture, um, there's this green arrow that this school used, and I think they picked it up from Home Goods. So kind of anything that's, you know, coat rack, you could use push pins to put, um, hang the metals up. Anything to get them on the wall is, is very exciting. So then um, music theory, flashcards, percussion instruments, those things are nice for the various activities that we have. You could get by without them, but they're, they're a nice tool to use. And then a Bluetooth speaker, so you can play our playlists um, on a speaker instead of your phone. Um, and that's that's kind of it. That's really like a very you know well put together uh, uh, room that you would have if you followed all of that. Um, okay, so now I'm just going to talk about some of the things that we're really proud of with the program. So if you'll give me this moment. Um, but so the program is so comprehensive, and I have touched on this a little bit, but the music theory that we have built into this program is is absolutely immense the amount of information that they learn is um it blows my mind all the time and so i think it works for a couple of reasons but definitely mainly because we put so much review into the program after like level two or three it's almost every single lesson you're spending time on reviewing what they've learned so it's you're just always inundating these small minds with this music theory so they just pick it up and they 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 learn it which is amazing to see and um from a early childhood program standpoint i know a lot of the programs out there um are very much focused on you know motion and dancing 
and singing and playing and socializing with other kids, that kind of thing. And there is a space for that. There's um, those classes are very much needed, um, but there's also a need for classes like this that have this very intense education for these kids, um, because what it does is it just creates these graduates who are like so educated. Um, you can, it's almost like an equivalent to a um, a week or two in like a college level music theory course is how much we have in this program. So once they get out of the program and move into private instrument lessons, they kind of get to jump right into the fun stuff like learning songs, you know, and moving through songs at a really rapid pace to adding to their repertoire, performing in recitals and all that kind of stuff. Um, which is really exciting and it's one of the reasons why teachers love it so much too because um, the retention for these students is really high. Um, you don't get a lot of parents who want to invest their time and money in putting their kid through you know a boot camp like this you could almost say and then pulling them out of out of music it's it's really not kind of what you would see so just by nature um you're creating these little musicians who just kind of stick around and stay in lessons which is is a huge benefit to everyone um so and it's really easy to to keep up to start in your your studio and then to keep going too because um there's really not any certification. There's not any um, regular, you know, annual re-up of training or anything like that. If you want to bring in another teacher and have another teacher um, start teaching animal adventure lessons too, no problem. Just, you know, maybe buy another teacher guide. Like there's really not a lot to it. Once you kind of fully understand the program, maybe by watching this video or chatting with one of us and then watching our training video, which is that 12 minute um, YouTube video I was talking about, you really know everything that you need to know to teach the program. So it's it's just kind of a, a no brainer to add to your program. It's like if you have ever um, taught and added a second instrument to your um, studio to offer lessons, it's really like that. Um, it kind of just fits in with all of your existing policies um, and business practices. So it's, it's great from that standpoint. So another thing too about this program is that, you know, one of the most common um, lesson times for private music lessons is after school. And um, you sometimes are left with these huge chunks of time in the, in the late morning, early afternoon, where you just don't really have any interest in people filling up those times. Um, and that's not a thing with, with uh, parents of preschoolers. They have that time free too. Um, so a lot of times after you start up this program, you start to have those chunks of time filled up, which is really great from a business standpoint. Um, and so I had mentioned earlier about um, the blurbs and the adventure guides for parents. Um, and that is something that parents really love about it is how inclusive it is for them in a really passive way. They don't need to be very engaged with the program to know exactly where their student is to see the um, progress that their student has made, um, which is really nice too for you know all of you super busy teachers and uh, business owners out there because it's you know you might not always have time to take five minutes after each lesson and update a, a parent on the progress of their student. So this kind of does that automatically for you, which um, is is a great feature. Uh, and then it is a moneymaker. So this is one of my favorite things to do. Um, so what I'm gonna do right now is open our profit calculator on our website, since we're kind of doing this on, at a broad level. What I'll do is just run through some basic numbers for both a single teacher scenario and a multi-teacher studio. Um, so these calculators are, are really basic. It's just kind of running through some um, general business numbers and then taking out the subscription fee that you guys will be on the line for with Animal Adventures and Music, which is $40 for single teachers a month and $100 for multi-teacher studios per month. Uh, so we'll start with the single teacher scenario. And so let's just say that you charge um, $30 per lesson and you don't have to pay anything to any teacher because it's just you teaching the class. And then let's say that you um, kind of start steady and you know 
um, you just got this program launched, so you have two students in the program. And, uh, you know, it's not bad. So you're already kind of pulling in a little bit of money. Could, could be better, you know, nothing to write home about. Uh, so then we'll start playing with a scenario where maybe you've been in business for a few months and you have, you know, word of mouth has been spreading. Um, maybe you have a little uh, display up in your, your lobby and that's fun. And so let's say now at this point you've brought in 25 students into your program. And so things are starting to look a little bit more exciting at this point. Uh, and so, so just something to think about for our single teachers. So then let's take a look at the multi-teacher studio. So we'll say you guys charge the same thing. You charge $30 a lesson. Uh, and in this case, you do have to pay, you know, a teacher salary. So we'll put that in there and, and bring that into the equation. And so same kind of startup scenario. Let's say you only have two students in your first month. You really just got things going. You just got the books ordered. You've got two students uh, in your program. And so you're, you've broken even, which is good, you know, and a little bit better than that. But again, you know, it's nothing, nothing crazy yet. But let's look at a couple months down the road and let's say that you have been getting a lot of traction. Maybe you have a couple teachers who are interested in teaching the program and they have siblings of their current students who, who already, you know, there's family connections there. So you bring that in and a couple months down the road, you, let's say you have 30 students in the program. So this is uh, starting to look pretty good here. And, uh, this is where it gets kind of fun picturing what things might look like down the road. And so one of our studios um, last month in uh, April added 22 new Animal Adventures in Music students to their studio in just one month. So um, let's play through that in this scenario. So let's say they went from 30 students to uh, 52 students. So I just, I like to play around with these numbers. It can be really fun. So this is on our website. So you can go to this website and play around with it at any time. It's really um, just kind of, like I said, some basic numbers, but it's something to get those wheels turning and think about how this program might fit into your business. Okay, so now at this point, I like to take a second and just check in with the person I'm talking to and see if, if they have any questions about the program. And I think for the most part, I, I have covered everything that usually comes up in these calls. I might have missed something. So again, please reach out to us if you have any questions. You can call us, text us. Uh, our phone number is 248-468-6303. And I'll put that on here. But call us, text us anytime if you have any other questions about this. Um, but right now what I'm going to do is launch into the launch steps. So what we, the way that we kind of think about it is that it's like five steps to getting this program up at your school. So the first step is just thinking through what your business is like and how you might want to run a program like this. So uh, who will be teaching, you know, which, which teachers of yours that you have will be teaching the program, what times of day and what days of the week will you be offering it? Um, what's your lesson room situation? Are you going to have a dedicated room or are you going to put the um, instruments and the uh, posters and the rug and stuff like that in an existing room. And then how will you charge for the books, which is a great segue into the next step here. Um, so I'll talk about that a little bit more specifically right now. So step two is becoming a member and ordering materials. So for a single teacher studio, that's thinking through adding that $40 a month um, membership fee and for a multi-teacher studio, it's the hundred dollars a month. So thinking through that. And then, um, what I'm showing on the screen here is our classroom kit and our new student bundle. And so the classroom kit is everything that we sell that you would want to have for your room. So it's our rug and the rug markers. It's our 15 posters, one teacher guide, and then one of all 10 medals. Um, so that's our classroom kit that we have and all those items together on their own, um, cost somewhere around $250 and we have them in this bundle for $150. And then the other thing you see here, this new student bundle. So this is one of books one through three and it's one of the medals for levels one through three. And the books cost $20 per book for books one through five and then $23 per book for books six through 10. And we have a pricing list that is made available on our website. So I will link to that so you can see all that stuff so you don't have to memorize this. And so this is like what you need to kind of get one student going in the program. This will um, have you good to go for like six months, kind of. 
um, with a student. So we take that and that's usually $74 and we took that down to $60. So this, these two bundles are available all the time for all of our existing teachers and schools to take advantage of these, these um, bundles. So what I like to do at this point is start thinking through exactly how many books and how much inventory you would want to have ready once you start this program. Um, so I had mentioned before we don't sell directly to parents and students. So in any scenario, you would want to have a small inventory um, at your school so that you could sell the books to the parents. And there's two ways to go about charging for these books to parents. Um, there's probably more ways than this, but this is two ways that our existing schools and teachers go about this. So one thing you could do is raise your tuition by a couple bucks per lesson. Um, so if you go from $30 a lesson to $32 a lesson, um, you're gathering you know, $8 a month, $16 every two months, so you're kind of in that range of if it takes about two to three months to, for a student to complete a book, um, raising that tuition just by a couple dollars per lesson will cover the cost of the book for you and then you give the books for free to your parents. So you would advertise the program at your studio as being all inclusive. So you would say uh, the books are included, you know, the stickers that come in the books you would say are included, it comes with flashcards and then, um, that would be one way to go about it. And the other way is not raising your tuition, just keeping it keeping it what it is, and then charging parents for the book every time that a student progresses through a level. So you would just say, hey, it's, it's that time. Your students moved from level two to level three. Um, it's time to, to pay for a book. But what we have for new teachers and new schools for your first time order that you place with us, what we basically do is give you around 60% off. So what I like to do at this point is, is think through, you know, are you a um, brand new teacher who, who doesn't have a, maybe a presence in the community yet? You're just getting things going, getting this program program going, then maybe what I would suggest for you at this point is a um, five new student bundles and one classroom kit. So that would normally be $300 for the new student bundles and then $150 for the classroom kit. And so we take that from the $450 and cut it down to $200. Um, and basically what we do is kind of just keep expanding and offering this discount if you want to add more new student bundles, if you want to build a bigger inventory. So if you're a bigger school, maybe you're a multi-teacher studio um, and you already know the inquiries are rolling in, you're going to be getting a lot of students into this program, you can buy for your first order up to 45 new student bundles um, in the classroom kit and we'll give that to you for 60% off. So that is a major discount and that's kind of fun if you take those numbers that we talked about in the profit calculator and run those through knowing that your um, cost for the books is going to be so much cheaper um, for your first order. So then I'll just kind of keep moving through the launch plan here um, while you think about those numbers. So that's kind of step two is building your inventory and becoming a member. And then step three is training your staff. And there's really not a lot to this, especially if you are a single teacher. Um, but in either case, like I said, we do have this 12 minute YouTube video that you can watch that tells you everything that you need to know about teaching the program. Uh, and if you've gotten this far in this video, then you also are very uh, well prepared to begin teaching the program as well. There's really not much to it. Uh, and we ha also have some PDFs that are basically the same content, but just written out in a PDF format, if, if that's what people prefer to. So we're always there to kind of kick kickstart that and help schools out with that aspect of things. So that's step three is training your staff. And then step four would be setting up your classroom or your lesson room. So this would be putting up the stuff that you had purchased from us, putting up those posters, um, putting up the medals, setting up the music staff rug. And then it's also thinking through what other items you might need for your lesson room that, that we don't sell. So um, pulling a keyboard in from another lesson room, um, buying any instruments that you don't have that you need to buy, that kind of thing, just setting up your classroom. Um, and then after that, it's just marketing the program. So um, adding a animal adventures and music page to your website, and then any other kind of marketing stuff that you usually do, like announcing the program on um, your social media accounts, 
um, email blasts, uh, printing out flyers, putting them in mailboxes, texting your current families, whatever, however you reach out to um, your community currently, you would just want to bring this into the mix and say, hey, I've got this new program going. Um, and you could also, a lot of schools also add, um, make a uh, promotion available. Like if you, you know, sign up in the next month, oh, um, you get the first book free or um, get the first lesson free. Um, or once you graduate through this program, you get a month of free private lessons afterwards. That's something that some schools do too. So it's just thinking through ways that you can bring people through the door with this. Um, and then this is a picture of some displays that we have that one of our schools have. Um, so this is just kind of an innovate, innovative way to bring people in in the location. Um, those are just bathroom racks, bathroom shelves that they found online and they have the towel rack and they use that to hang up all the metals and put some pictures up there. So just kind of get the wheels moving to think about how you would want to market this program um, and announce it at your school. And that is really kind of it. So uh, at this point, what I like to do is give you a moment to think through everything. Um, I ran through as much of the program as I can think of. I, I think I kind of covered everything that has to do with this program um, so far. Uh, I probably left out some scenarios or if you have some specific questions that relate to you that I didn't cover, please do reach out to us. You can call us or email us or text us anytime and we'll get back to you and um, work through whatever kind of questions you have. Um, but I, I want to urge you to really think about adding this program to your school. It's really impactful. Um, to these kids and it's it's a great program to add to your business so um, yeah think through it and you know explore our website and see if there's anything on there that um, piques your interest too and uh, that's it thanks for watching